<laughs> oh, hey, yep, yep. Oh, hey. Oh, shit. Is this thing on? Yes, yes, we are on. Hello, yes. World of YouTube. Tailful side here, taking a walk with the pug. Oh, man. You know, I wanted to do a video on this. As you can see, we have a YouTube channel. Um, and oh man, this is just crazy. So we have um, YouTube channel, Charismatic Voice, Vocal Coach for Opera. Now, I don't know what else song, uh, what song she sings, but I did see a video of a picture of her with a microphone. So I'm sure she obviously sings, teaches people to sing. And, um, and she does look quite young. Say so, I would say maybe in her late 20s, mid 30s, but it's like, wow, man. You know, these, these videos blow me away because me being almost a half a century. Next year, man, I'm right around the corner being 50. Growing up through the years, been listening to music at the, since the age of five. And, you know, to see the future generation um, come along and, you know, don't know my music for whatever reason. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is... This is just mind blowing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm. I understand, right? I'm from a different generation, but it's still just it. Really, just mind blows me. For people that just never heard Judas Priest, let alone the first song they listen to is Painkiller. And I mean, I find it pretty ironic that I just put this CD in today, or this morning, or yesterday morning, and remembering it coming out in 1990. You know, having a Judas Priest album in my, you know, life was a big, huge, um, big, huge must have you know I was introduced to Judas Priest in 1982 or the summer of 1980 what was it oh wait a minute I think of summer of 83 and I mean the first song of course that I listened to was um, Breaking the Law so I mean I was at school you know trying to deal with my new life my mother brought me into, you know, of leaving the only house I ever knew from air and, you know, my parents splitting up. And then I'm out in New York with, a, you know, a whole bunch of other crew. My mother knew these people, you know, since she was a teenager, say so, young age, before she met my father and all this, you know. But I never met him, and then when I did have see pictures of him, I only knew him as a baby. I mean, they literally right brought me up there as a baby to visit or whatnot. But, so it was just people that I knew, but was too young to remember. And when I started, you know, hanging around with them or whatnot, it was a tough time, but also they did bring me and, you know, teach me some things in the music world, mind you, that I highly appreciate. I mean, I think I might have, you know, fell upon Judas Priest later on in life, but that was the year for me, 1983, the summer of 83, and man, I tell you. And then when Screaming for Vengeance came out, it was like, whoa! All that album, man, I just set me right in the mood where I was out there, you know? And yeah, I just, I just can't say it enough. It just minds blows me that people, well, this is the first time I heard Judas Priest and people keep recommending it. So she puts it on and 
Oh my god, the expressions of her face in the beginning of this video. I recommend anybody check it out. But <laughs> and if anybody knows the um painkiller song, man, I mean I wore my tape out on my cassette and had to buy another one. And you know, I recently a few, you know, five, six years back, I mean my wife's were going through her CD. She's like, hey, you can have this. And I was like, what the hell are you? I mean, I found this out, you know, way before time. But I'm like, what the hell are you doing with this freaking CD? And come to find out there was a song she liked on. It was Touch of Evil. But, man, my 90 hit. You know, you got the greatness of Pantera, Metallica, Ozzy, you know. All the greats, but when Judas Priest came out with this album, man, you want to talk about, you know, a band that, you know, regardless had screaming for vengeance, you know, ram it down and, um, you know, and then people really, you know, didn't, I mean, I dug the album Turbo, Turbo Lover, I mean, I love that album. It was, it wasn't as heavy as, uh, but it was, it was made for its time. You know, it was made in 87 for its time. And there's a lot of music on there that brings back memories and was good memories of that time of 87. So, I mean, I, I cherish that album too. But when Painkiller hit and the speed that they picked up with, of course, you know, losing Dave Holland, don't get me wrong, he could manage to pound them drums too. But... It sucked that man got sick, then it's even worse that he couldn't even um, hit the Hall of Fame. I mean, just before he died, they got that in nominees, and then they didn't make it that year. And I think Dave might have just gave up and said, well, hell with this. And, you know, he was sick and everything, but it sucked that man didn't get to see him or even get up on that stage to accept his award because he was, you know, a part of that band too, so... Of course, the original drummer got up there from, you know, the early years. And then there was a couple albums, I think, Sin After Sin, they didn't have a drummer. So, and then what the drummer they did have came off the <laughs> studio album of Superman, mind you, of 78. And, man, that guy could bang some skins, too. So, you know, Judas Priest got a history of, you know, putting together a great lineup. Especially when they brought in Mr. Rob Halford. I mean, this woman don't even know that the albums after Judas Priest, when he left, fight Halford itself, self-titled album. And, um, you know, he had, I think, three albums, maybe. I, didn't, I mean, his second album with the race car on it, I mean, that was kind of, eh, but it was good but not as good as the original Halford with the songs like Drive. And um, he had a bunch of good songs on that and Fight Even That One. Oh, man, that was a vicious album. So, I mean, I, I wrote in the comments on this, and, I mean, I gave her some songs like Last Rose of Summer and um, to check out Screaming for Vengeance, Riding on the Wind. I mean, them have long, screaming vocals, high-pitched range. I mean, similar, you know, screaming of vengeance and um, riding on the wind. You know, Halford does an awesome job of pinpointing a high-pitched range, especially like in this one. But this woman's face ex expressions, man, I couldn't stop laughing. I mean, she's like, wow. I mean, she's like a nerdy type girl and you know for health's sakes that she is not into heavy metal. I mean, I'll give her a shut-out picture view of her face. And, <laughs> and I mean, I'm sorry, but I just can't help it that watching someone, that the first song that you're going to listen to from Judas Priest to be Painkiller. And I could say this is one of the heaviest songs that Judas Priest has ever formed together. Regardless of um, Devil's Child. Oh, I love that song, man. That one just mean ripping chords and that. But she goes on to explain the pitches and everything. And 
And she was like, well, if I was to like this song, I mean, I am impressed of his vocals. And and I also put in my comments that, yes, you know, Rob Halford is right up there with Steve Perry and um, Freddie Mercury. Of course, Rob, Rob jokingly, <laughs> I don't know if he was joking, but he was saying about us gay men, him and Freddie, you know, can do things in the vocal ranges because we're gay men. It's like, sure, you got that right. <laughs> Then again, Steve Perry ain't gay, so where does he get his vocals from? So that's pretty <laughs> funny, but, you know. But I told this woman, you you be uh, sitting there all day with the, um, you know, the record category or um, the vocal ranges that this man throws out. I mean, I like Last Rose of Summer, man. That's a very peaceful song, and it is about... Um, Mind you, the world getting along together. I mean, Judas Priest has also been known to songs like United. Um, you know, to unite the world. And yet, hell, even Rob Halford said it in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> we accept every gender and every, you know, color and every breed, and that's right. So, I mean... You know, honor that man. And this woman, I mean, it's, I just get a kick out of her reactions and stuff because she, you know, all she could say is she is very impressed of Mr. Halford and his um, vocals. I mean, she does say he is scary in this video, which he is trying to look, you know, metal to the fullest. I mean, of course, you also had bands like Anthrax stomping the grounds in the 90s and Slayer and, you know, stuff like that lingering around Exodus. Um, you, know, you know, the list can go on. Overkill even came out with some badass albums of 1990 and 91. But, I mean, Judas Priest being where they came from in the beginning, I mean... <clears throat> Yeah, they didn't break through through the metal era. And I just watched a little documentary on them saying, that, you know, British Steel. But then again, it was unleashed in the East, live in Japan. And they were wearing leather back then, but they're saying the 1980 album was, was what kicked them off. But they were wearing the leather. People probably weren't getting it, but, you know, they are the ones that brought the metal range. Well, the look of heavy metal is for sure, but if anybody wants to check this out and see this woman's reaction, man, you'll get a kick out of it. I mean, she's, just, she's got some other videos up of Mr. Crowley. Victim of Change is another good song. I didn't mention that one, but I mentioned The Ripper. Victim of Change, oh, and Beyond the Realms of Death. That is another high vocal song too, man. And um, she would get a kick out of them songs I mentioned. The, you know, the Beyond the Realms of Death, The Ripper, Screaming for Vengeance, and Riding on the Wind. I mean, I'll sit there sometimes in the shower being sick, Riding on the Wind, trying to scream like Robin. The other night I was actually listening to it, and I, my fucking head went light because I'm taking a hot shower, and I'm trying to do the long chord. I'm sitting there screaming, and I'm like, Ugh, and I got dizzy. <laughs> I almost knocked myself out. <clears throat> but I love to sing, man. Uh, you know, I love to... Actually, like I said, I have a video up of um, Time I Sang in Front of Corn. Of course, the song I picked was Breaking... I mean, not Breaking the Law. Um, you got another thing coming. One of the influential singing persons that he's ever seen do that song... So, I mean, I walked out of there with something, even though I didn't get an autographed guitar, I didn't get a thousand bucks, even though I should have got something like that. And I'm like, son of a bitch. But hey, it is what it is. And I got a nice comment from Mr. Jonathan Davis, which was another one from 1994 that came out with a ripping, badass, heavy album. But like I said, the origins go deep, whether it's from the mighty Black Sabbath to Judas Priest, you know, both bands, man, have their rights and royalties of being the metal gods, let alone kiss gods of thunder. <clears throat> so, I mean, 
It all comes down to, you know, these bands are just epically a masterpiece of what they've done, especially Judas Priest. And I also wanted to share this video as right because they finally got what they deserved after so many years, and that's right, getting their asses into that Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But, um, and like I said, I just slapped in this album the other day, two days ago, man. Yeah, it was the other day, and just putting on painkiller and driving down the road. And sometimes I sit there and think to myself, I shouldn't have done this because I'm stepping on the gas, I'm speeding up, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. But, um, yeah, the, the, re the reactions in this video I recommend people watch. Because if you're a Judas Priest fan, and you know what the mighty Rob Halford can do. Oh, this woman is priceless with her reactions. Her comments and everything, I mean. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I gotta see what she says about victim of changes. Let alone Mr. Crowley, because Ozzy does some... He has some high-pitched tone voice, <clears throat> too, and can sing extremely <clears throat> high notes. But I like the days when Ozzy was singing with that deep voice of, you know, what is this that stands before me? Oh man, that, that voice was priceless. And you know, Rob Halford always, <clears throat> always looked into, you know, what was Black Sabbath, what they were doing. So with him coming in, Oh man, you couldn't even ask for a better band to back up the mighty Black Sabbath. But anyways, I thought I'd share this and <clears throat> an opera singer, a youngin. <laughs> oh man, the friggin' reactions is right. You you got to you gotta watch this video if you are a true Judas Priest fan and seeing someone is I mean. This woman seems very peaceful, very, um, how could I say, uh, luxurious. Just, you know, down to earth, humble. And she's like, well, I'm gonna check out this Judas Beat song. <laughs> oh, man. I would say if I, um, literally, <laughs> um, would have it my way, I'd probably pee myself just laughing so hard, but. <laughs> oh man, I didn't want to wet myself, you know. For a lack of clothes, I gotta do laundry. <laughs> but until that next video, be safe, take care. The mighty Judas Priest, it's about time you are where you to be. And if anybody wants to check out a funny reaction, boy, you gotta check out this video on this. That's right. And then if you got if you never heard this song, well get your ass listening to it. Cause this is probably one of the brutalist, heaviest songs from the mighty Judas Priest. But then again, I can't say that, but it wasn't even Judas Priest. But I can say that um KK Down and Glenn Tippin when they brought in Ripper Owens, they started playing some real heavy riffs, but it sucks that they didn't have Rob for it. I mean, Mr. Halford for it. But I mean, if they would have gone on to be heavy like that with Rob, man, who knows where they would have been. I mean, it's just too bad Rob took his time off, even though when he brought his own band playing, you know, heavy shit, it was just insane. And if they would have combined that with the fight era, with the Halford era and all them albums, I think there would have been just more amazing effing music from Judas Priest. And it sucks that that decade that they took off from one another had to happen. So check it out, folks. Be safe, take care, and listen to Judas Priest. I recommend it, and I demand it. Ha-ha! Out.